and then turn them all on. So that's all the lights. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rustamod. In the last episode, you saw us design an entire dash for our 1950 Willys Jeep build. Then we ended up CNC machining the entire dash, getting it to fit into our 1950 Willys to give it a more updated design and a more custom look. Because this Jeep is actually a 1950 Willys wagon that we are chassis swapping on top of a modern Jeep Wrangler frame. So we are almost done with the interior. We got the entire dash put in and it's ready to go we just have to paint it now that we got all the interior stuff handled we want to finish up some frame rail stuff so that way we can move on to some more aesthetic stuff so if you saw in a previous episode we actually took the frame from a jeep tj and put it underneath of this 1950 willies and we actually lengthened the frame to be able to meet the wheelbase now the rear end of the Jeep TJ is a lot shorter than the Willys frame. So what we ended up doing is cutting the rear section off of the Willys frame. And we're going to have to figure out a way to weld the old Willys rear frame to the new frame because we want to have all the bumper supports and our hitch mount to be the same as it was. So that way it lines up where the bumper mounts on the body. So we have to measure the length of the Willys frame and then we have to measure the width of the TJ frame and to see where it lines up perfectly and then that way we can get ready to start welding it all together. So it is pretty crucial left and right trying to get everything spot on but it's a very similar width already so we should have no problem welding this thing into place. So now that we got our measurements dialed in, we can start by grinding down where we're going to weld and then start tacking it into place so that way we can see where it's going to fit. Alright, so now that we got that rear section of frame rail tacked in, we're going to make some gussets on the top and then also ones on the bottom to be able to strengthen the rear frame rail so that way when we're towing something or anything on the back is some weight on it, it won't go anywhere. So we're going to tack those gussets into place and then weld it up. So same thing as the top, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom and weld these on. Alright, so here's what the final product looks like with the frame rails welded on. They turned out pretty good, we got them painted up. So now we can start moving on to some other things we got to get done. Alright, so on the motor mounts, we have this motor mount and the front motor mount. So we ended up adding this another back motor mount so that it's even on both sides. And then we have the front one. So we had to cut it off. And then now we're gonna just weld the piece that we cut off to a new plate. And then it'll go right back where it was. All right, so we saw some of you guys comments saying that the motor was shaking a lot whenever we had it running in the other video. So we decided that we were going to follow you guys' advice and add a little bit more strength to our motor setup. So we're going to add a rear motor mount as well as a front motor mount on each side. So that way it definitely won't move. So whenever we added the rear motor mount, it was just too much weight off the rear. So we had to adjust the front one. Now that we got that dialed in, it should be ready to go. All right, so now we got the motor and the transmission bolted down, everything's torqued. We got the motor running and everything is tightened down so we don't have to move it anymore. So we rolled the chassis out from under the Jeep body. So that way we can get in here and we can start mocking up 
how the engine bay is going to look. We can get in all the spots so we can hang like our power steering pump, our air conditioning compressor, and then mount all of our intercooler and radiator and all the cooler stuff. So we're going to try to figure out a way to mount the transmission cooler, the condenser, the intercooler, and then the radiator into the front of the Jeep so it's a lot easier to get to. So that way, the next time we lower the Jeep down, we can just bolt it to the chassis and then it'll be ready to be plumbed and everything will be ready to go. Here's the intercooler for the wheelies where we had to modify. It was a two and a half inch inlet. So we got two inch pipe here and our new turbo is actually only inch and a half. The old turbo was two inches. So anyway, we're gonna have to step it down once we get over there. But uh, this is the only intercooler that we could find that fit in the uh, radiator shell. And then we got our radiator mount over here. So looking pretty good. Hopefully we'll get that put in here shortly. So we ended up getting our intercooler. We welded some fittings on it to meet the size of the hose that we have and uh, fabricated some brackets to be able to mount into the Willie's core support where all this stuff is going to mount. So that way all of our cooling stuff and our intercooler, radiator, transmission cooler, everything like that will mount in here. So we have to fab that up and we'll show you guys how we're going to do it. All right, so now we're going to put our intercooler, just test fit it into place. That way we can see where it's gonna fit. We ended up drilling two holes in the core support for our intercooler pipes to go through, and it looks like it fits pretty good. So our brackets will bolt right into the side of the core support. So now we're gonna start the rest. We're gonna mount two LED lights. We're gonna mount them behind the grill because LED lights on an old looking vehicle just is out of place, doesn't look good. So we're gonna try to go stealth with them. So they're gonna mount on the intercooler bracket here put two on each side and yes it's going to block it a little bit with the crossbars but oh well uh, it's better than nothing so these things are really bright i forget the lumen rating on them but anyway several thousand lumens supposedly so we're going to mount those there however it's really tight forward to back so we're going to get these uh positioned on here first and then we'll come back after that and then mount our transmission cooler on here All right, so that's pretty much what it looks like when we have all the lights mounted to it. All right, so now we want to fit in the intercooler again now that we have the lights on it. So that way we can see if we have to trim anything like we're doing here. That way if they hit anything, we can clearance it now. So that way when we go to bolt everything in, it should be ready to go. All right, well, we're, this is really tight up in here. So we're running the in, in two inch intercooler tube. This is a two and a half. This is the smallest tube size we can find. So we stepped it down to two inch. It's a two inch uh <clears throat> inlet hose uh top and bottom here so they're real tight making a turn here up against this headlight bucket which is why we got the rubber in here but we got 20 pounds of crap in a 10 pound bag as usual so we got to still have to get the uh trans cooler on the front and we got the lights up here but the first thing we got to do is get this positioned up and down to exactly where it goes so that's what we're wrestling with now all right so this is what it looks like with the intercooler and the lights on. So you can see they're tucked back there, but you can't really tell that they're in there. All right, so now we will attach our condenser and our trans cooler and all the other things that are gonna go sandwich between this intercooler. So that way we can make sure that all that stuff fits like our transmission cooler here. We just want to make sure that we can get to lines and everything like that. So whenever we have the engine in the engine bay, we can get to everything now before we get all clustered with everything else that's going to go in here. So make sure you, we test fit everything like that. Test fit our air conditioning condenser that we have here and trying to get all that stuff dialed in to make sure that we design these brackets and they're not hitting our intercooler piping or interfering with the wiring on lights and stuff like that. So here's a good shot. You can see our transmission 
cooler lines going underneath we are trying to make sure that we can get to them and access them whenever we put our radiator mount on here so we just machined this small plate that is going to mount on the bottom of the core support and then the radiator will mount to it and it will all get bolted together so whenever we get everything in we want to make sure that we can still access all the lines if we have to tighten them later down the road and stuff like that some things you don't really think about but it is necessary when you're designing the entire vehicle like this so that's pretty much what we got so far air conditioning ac condenser intercooler and the transmission cooler and then we have the lights that were mounted onto the intercooler and then there's the bracket that we have for the radiator so now we're gonna have to figure out a upper radiator bracket and then that should be done all right so now that we got all that stuff mounted we can move on to the lighting system that we're gonna put in the front of the jeep now you saw us put the lights in the grill now we have some other really slick ideas so we can hide some LED lights in this classic Jeep. Well, what we're gonna do, we're trying to keep the lights very stealth on this thing. You can see how we hid the uh, LEDs behind the grill at a distance. It's, uh, they kind of blend in with the radiator so you don't really see it. You might notice that we've upgraded the headlights here. These are actually still halogens. We're gonna be running 100 watt off-road uh, high beams in it. But we've got turn signal and uh, parking light built into the uh, headlight. So that allows us to repurpose the uh, the beehive turn signals uh, and parking lights that were on here originally. So what we've got here is if you can see the profile of that, that's a very similar profile to the original parking light and turn signal that was on it. So the idea here, this in here, to simulate uh, the stock light. So that allows us to keep this very, very similar to the stock look yet they're LED spotlights and they're also LED uh, uh, yellow lights for fog lights and you can activate them independently or uh, at the same time. So this is the original uh, turn signal parking light. You can see the beehive. These are actually glass. They're not uh, plastic reproductions. And this is the light bucket that, uh, that those resided in. You can see that uh, we're very close. Uh, we've got some arms that are sticking off of this light but in terms of diameter we're pretty close so here it is with the chrome bezel and that fits perfectly uh, within the within the bezel very similar to the uh, the beehive you know the projected pronounced uh, stick out on it which is kind of cool so anyway that's the plan all right so now that we have the lights figured out what we're going to do with the front we're going to turn down the bezels on the outside so that way they'll just slide right into the original existing willie's bezels and then we can put the whole thing together got the housings turned they fit in there really nice each of them kicked out a couple of times so we get the thread straightened up on those that's the thing that's tough when you get trying to hold by a thread, you should really never do it, but we didn't, couldn't get it squared up without going through elaborate measures. But uh, anyway, pretty cool. Fits in the original uh, bucket and the bezel snaps right on. So we're gonna put them back together, show you the finished product. Well, there we go. Got it assembled, fits in there perfect. Couldn't have sized it better. I mean, that literally we didn't have to touch the outside diameter of that black uh, housing on the uh, part where it goes through the bezel there perfect snaps up to clean the bucket up a little bit but and then also the ring uh, get that shiny again but everything fits up looks good all right so now we're going to start assembling the lights on the front of the willies so these just bolt right into place right into the original housing that the original regular bulb went into but now we'll have some modern led conveniences so that way when we're off-roading this thing we can see our trail and have some good lighting but it doesn't look like we stuck a bunch of cheesy led lights all over it they're very stealth so you wouldn't even know unless you had known what the original light looks like but to the average person you wouldn't even know that these are upgraded so all the 
chrome and then all the nickels coming off of that. All that brown is not rust. That's copper. That's what they call triple chrome plating back in the old days. Plate it with copper, nickel, and then chrome. Chrome is just a hard clear protection. We go 2022 on 1950 and nobody will know all right guys the previous clip that you saw was in the past but now we got everything wired up so i want to show you guys how everything works here in the future so you can see how all the lights work together all right so hit the grill lights yeah cool all right i hit the um one you just hit the amber lights yep and then you can turn them the other color yep the rock lights we put out of these also and then turn them all on so that's all the lights and the rock lights and then we can also turn the headlights on but we don't have those wired to the switch yet so that's how all the lights are gonna look in the jeep all right guys that's gonna do it for this episode thank you guys so much for watching our lights turned out really nice in the front of this jeep so we are back to work on this thing trying to get it ready for hot rod power tour so if you guys are at power tour make sure to stop it by and say hello also check out our patina party that we're having august 13th at maryland international raceway go check out if you guys are in the area bring by your patina ride or hot rod to our car show it should be a fun time but we'll see you guys on the next episode thanks for watching